Hello and welcome to another tutorial on Construct 3 where we'll be playing air hockey. And you can see here that there's a puck moving a bit faster than the, uh, the paddles. I'll call them the paddles or in the game they are called the players. It's a multi touch game and the fact that the puck is moving a bit more fluently here is because there is a physics involved and you'll see in a minute how it works so it's a basic air hockey game um, it uses multi-touch um, you'll see in a minute how that exactly works the multi-touch environment but of course I'm playing this on a computer so that's got no multi-touch functionality so I'm using uh, the mouse to switch players and stuff like that. Um, so this is the layout of the game. There's two players. This is a player um, paddle actually. It's got two instance variables. Player number. This is player one. This is player two. And then it's got a touch ID instance variable. I'll show you in a minute how that is used and why it is used. Um, and it's been applied the physics. Um, the physics behavior actually. So <clears throat> what happens is uh, there's also a puck and the puck also has the physics behavior. But you can see if we switch between the player and the puck that the friction and the elasticity has been changed. Now the essence of the, the, this change is that the friction is a lot less in uh, the puck as opposed to in the player because when you use a uh, friction, a friction is the amount of resistance it has um, on the surface it's moving on. So the less friction you have, it's like skating on ice uh, when you have a lot of uh, very little friction. Rather. If you have a lot of friction, it means like you're dragging a boulder around, for example. So this one has uh, very little friction and that's the reason why it moves so fast, just like an air hockey. Um, so these uh, boundaries here also have the physics, um, the physics uh, applied to it, um, and but this is set immovable, hmm? so that's why that is done. So that's basically it, uh, except for this one here. Of course, this is a gate. Whenever uh, the puck hits a gate, basically, um, the the score is increased. Basically, so that's what functionally happens and that's all the, the different sprites in the game this a different object let's now see how exactly the event sheet works so on start of layout we set the world gravity to zero why is that because otherwise the book and the players would fall to the ground and that's not the idea so let's change this and see what the result is uh, there we have it and that's not exactly what we want so that's why we set the gravity to zero. So um, let's uh, do simple things first. For example, this bit of logic is uh, a logic which is executed when the puck hits a gate. And it means actually that a goal has been scored and the puck is, the puck is destroyed. Um, and then if the player instance variable of the gate equals one, then we add one to the player two score um, and otherwise it's actually the player two's gate then we add one to the player one score and those two uh, global numbers here available and then uh, of course we set the text on the layout to display the current score um, now if there is no puck on the layout we create a new puck eh, when both players are not touching the screen so um, if there is nothing in touch and there are no pucks on the screen, we create objects right in the middle. Uh, so that's what happens here. So the multi-touch environment is a bit tricky. Um, this is how we do it. So um, we have to assign a touch ID to a player. And if you look at the player here, this has got a touch ID instance variable. Whenever someone touches the screen, uh, this event will be fired on any touch start. Um, and then we need to see, okay, if the player has been touched, if a player object has been touched and it has, the touch ID has not been set yet, so it's the default value here, minus one. And the player 
um, what we do here the player number of the player sprite equals one or two and if it equals one or two uh, is basically depending on the x coordinate of the touch so what we do here uh, the touch id is actually the touch id of the touching that is happening but the touch id is an arbitrary number so it's not zero one two three you can't assume a touch id has a certain value so what we do is on touch start we use the touch id which will be set on touch start which is a, a meaningful value here and then for that touch id we get the x value if it's smaller than the layout width divided by two meaning it's to the left of the middle then we're actually handling player one when it's to the right of the middle we're actually handling player two so this player we just selected here it's got no touch and it's to the left or either to the right we set the touch id instance variable of that player to the touch id which has been assigned on touch start that's what happens here the same thing but vice versa happens on touch end when a player uh, lets his hand go of the of the screen what happens is we get the touch uh, the, we get the correct player with the correct touch id and then we set that touch id to minus one so the next time a player starts touching the screen again he can still go into on touch start and have this logic executed as it checks on the minus one here of course so that's on touch uh, start and on touch end and the bulk of the logic is actually in the on tick on every tick we have to move move uh, move uh, each player sprite that has an active touch id uh, into the touch touch position so uh, we check here um, for each player on the board we check if the touch id is smaller than zero meaning it's still on its default value being minus one which means that it's actually not being touched at the moment uh, so we set the velocity to zero zero mind you we set no speed or whatever uh, or we set no position or direction or whatever uh, this is done using the velocity uh and of the physics uh plugin um or the physics behavior rather um and this is the best way to make a physics object move or in this case stand still because it has no vector and um the vector has x component and y component y and that means it is stopped that's basically it so if it's not smaller than zero meaning it has a valid touch id then we need to move it along so what we do here we make sure that the touch id is still active it's just a condition as a precaution um, it might not be needed but it's a precaution in there so we have a, a local variable it's called pat um, and we need that a bit later um, the pat um, is the player width divided by two now what is that if we go and double click on a player and we go to the origin there's a an, an, every image point has a, uh, every image has image points and there's at least one image point namely uh, it's being the origin and this is the actual x and y coordinate of the image is actually located in here usually by default when you start uh, using sprites uh, the image the origin of the image is always in the center but you can place it anywhere like the top left or whatever but here it's in the center like default and what we're going to do in the on uh, every tick here uh, I'm going to show you in a minute we have to make sure that this player sprite is, stays within these boundaries if we're dragging around you can't leave the boundaries uh, but as the it is if we're going to check for the x and y coordinate the check and x and y coordinate is here in the middle of that sprite so if we go moving it along and we check the x and y coordinate only now will it hit the boundary and that's actually too late because there's also already half a puck going uh, outside of the layout so it needs to stop there and that's where the padding comes into place so the pad variable is actually a padding variable which is half of the size of this player object so it's actually going to be comparing of the center the image point center 
plus or minus the padding of the player and that's what it does here so then we set the padding here and what we're going to do is we're going to continuously set an x and y coordinate uh, of uh, the player actually so there are two variables here x and y which is actually these x and y and we're going to assign them a value um, and after that we're going to set the velocity uh, to uh, uh, that value x and y um, so uh, it's moving in that direction so instead of move we use the velocity um, the functionality of the fixes physics behavior so in order to set the x and y values we need to check for uh, the player uh, the actual physical player touching the the, the device um, and we're going to use the x for id uh, function here which gives me the current x value of the player touching the the, the glass of the device at a certain x coordinate but that's in order to limit that we're going to have to say that we have to limit the x coordinate uh, to uh, to be within the confines of the bounding le box left plus the padding and the middle of the screen is being layout with divided by two minus the padding and we use the clamp function for that so the clamp function will use this value as long as it's between this uh, lower limit and this higher limit yeah once it is lower than the lower limit it will take the lower limit if it's higher than the higher limit it will take the higher limit so it's never beyond those boundaries so what we say here that the x coordinate should be actually the bounding box left which is here plus the padding so that's about there because the padding is that wide or this being the middle of the screen minus the padding that's about there and the same happens for the y coordinate if we go and check out the y coordinate we're using the bounding box tops and the bounding box bottom which is actually bounding box top plus the padding bounding box bottom minus the padding so that's what happens here exactly the same thing happens for player 2 except we're using the other side of the board of course and then finally we're going to use the x and y coordinates here we've determined them um, to set uh, the x coordinate minus self the x coordinate so we're using the variable and uh, subtracting the x coordinate from it so we can uh, move in that direction x and y that's how the velocity works it's a vector actually of a x and y command um, um, component and then we divide it by dt dt is the delta time and we need to add it there because we need the game to be a uh, frame rate independent um, and again here we use a clamp variable to avoid that it's very uh, moving very fast uh, we use the clamp minus 3000 plus 3000 that's what we're doing here so that's it that's how we make uh, very very simple in 19 events here we can make that um, air hockey game so as always please like and subscribe and I will leave a link in the description where you can download the template for free thank you for watching